This is Laguna Seca, one of the most famous racetracks in the world. Currently, they're being sued by people who live over there. Now, there are millions of race fans like myself who are pretty ticked off about it. But is there any legitimacy to this lawsuit? Today, we're diving into the most notorious lawsuit in motorsport. Who's actually filing this lawsuit? Is the track really at risk of shutting down? And most importantly, do the residents even care? So I'm going into the wasp's nest to see if I can talk to some of the nice folks of Monterey County. You love race cars? You know why? Why? <laughs> Let's start with the lawsuit itself. Now, if you're like me, then you've seen the countless headlines about this lawsuit, like this one. Last December, a group called the Highway 68 Coalition filed a lawsuit against Monterey County, who owns Laguna Seca. That's right, the county owns it. They stated that the track is a nuisance for local residents, mostly thanks to its violation of land use permits and zoning laws. To put it in terms that Jeremiah could understand, the track is too noisy, there's too many events, and there's too much traffic. But is that really the case? It's kind of crazy to think that residents would complain about the noise of a racetrack after moving next to it, especially considering that there's an outdoor rifle range even closer to the community than the track itself but it turns out the residents might have some ground to stand on. Back in 1983, the Monterey County Planning Commission approved a land use permit for the LSRA, or the Laguna Seca Recreation Area. And in this permit, Monterey County promised that it would limit the area to five major event days, six medium-sized event days, and 24 small event days each year. What's crazy though, is in that permit, there's no language that actually permits those events to be motorsports events. Basically, the lawsuit alleges the the use permit does not allow racing at all. But it would stand to reason that because Laguna Seca is a racetrack, that there would be racing there. But nevertheless, here we are. So the issue that the Highway 68 Coalition has is not that its residents bought homes by a racetrack, it's that they feel like the number of events at Laguna Seca has increased, quote, substantially over the past two years to the point where they feel like they have to take legal action. They feel like they got duped. Richard Rosenthal, the attorney representing the Highway 68 Coalition, says that the track is now in use more than 340 days a year, and that most of those events exceed 100 decibels of noise. And to make matters even more complicated, Monterey County recently signed a long-term concessions agreement with a nonprofit called Friends of Laguna Seca, or FLS. Part of the current agreement is that FLS needs to invest millions of dollars into the infrastructure of the track itself. In 2022, it was estimated that the track generated nearly 250 $50 million in economic impact. That's a hell of a lot of money, dude. And reason would lead you to believe that if FLS needs to spend a bunch of money on the track, they're gonna plan to recoup that money by having even more events. To make matters worse, the Highway 68 Coalition says it has found no evidence that any environmental impact reports have been carried out since that 1983 land use approval. It also says that racing activities weren't analyzed in that report, so there aren't any hard facts on the ways that things like noise, traffic, exhaust, sewage disposal impact a local environment. And in a state as concerned about the environment as California, it makes sense that residents would be a little annoyed that this big local nuisance is exempt from all the rules and laws that govern them. But hold on a second. This is Laguna Seca we're talking about. This place has a legacy. This track has been around since 1957. The Highway 68 Coalition wasn't even founded until the 70s. This is like moving to New York City and suing the Statue of Liberty for being too hot. Now I've read a lot of articles about this, I've seen the documents, but I've never actually seen anyone talk to the people who live in that area. I'm pretty busy, so we sent someone who's not so busy. Jeremiah Burke. Thanks, Nolan. Now, the closest house to Laguna Seca is about half a mile away from turn two, and that's where I'm standing right now. But the majority of houses are about a mile away in this community over there. It's also a gated community, which means they probably don't want solicitation. So I'm going into the wasp's nest to see if I can talk to some of the nice folks of Monterey County. Some people call me a YouTuber. Others, a mechanic. But with today's sponsor, Factor, you can call me Chef. With Factor, I learned it was all about delivering fresh, never frozen, high quality meals right to your front door. Gourmet meals in just two minutes. Easy for a chef like me. Every week, there's over 35 meals and 55 add-ons to choose from, but these meals aren't just meals. They're meticulously curated boxes of flavor that'll even satisfy the most discerning palates, okay? Keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, or 
My box for the week, chef's choice. Today, I'll be cooking this sun-dried tomato chicken with a steady hand and a microwave. You too can unlock your inner chef with Factor. Head over to factor75.com or just click that link below and use Donut 50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. That's two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you are an active subscriber. That's factor75.com with promo code DONUT50. So, the neighborhood in question is a gated community that resides directly next to the track. Uh, so I'm gonna go see if I can talk to some of them and see what the hubbub is. Hey, how are you? I wanted to see if I can get in and interview some people who live here. No, we don't allow that. You don't allow no, that? You, we can't let you in unless you're on the guest list. It's okay. Sorry. I appreciate it, it's okay. Hey, I'm here to see James Hilton. Yeah. What do you mean that? <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> so, we decided to come to the neighborhood that doesn't have a gate, and arguably, it's even closer to the track. The corkscrew is right there. So I'm gonna walk around, I'm gonna see if I can find some people living in this neighborhood, and figure out how much of a nuisance it really is living next to Laguna Seca. So I wanted to just talk to people in the community and see uh, how loud it really is in this development and in this area. I've been going to that racetrack since 1958. Yeah, I like it. You're a car guy? Yeah. Yeah? The track's noisy when they have a big event. Mm -hmm. And on holiday seasons, the jets fly over a bunch. No, I don't have any other disclaimer. It's been done right, because I lived here for 25 years. Sure, yeah. I don't want any shitty. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you bought your house, did they tell you, hey, there's a racetrack over there? Uh, we knew it. Imagine moving into this area and having that bother you later. It's not very loud. Yeah, doesn't bother you? No. Did it ever bother you at any no. point? No. Okay. How right. are you? Right. So, so fine. Yeah, How nice to meet you? you. What's your name? Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Very no. loud, but uh, I could take it. You could take it. <laughs> Depends on where the wind too, you know, mm -hmm. where the wind blow, you know. Mm -hmm. So you know you're nothing now. So at least in this neighborhood, the sound isn't too big of an issue. But for the heck of it, there's a small track day going on at Laguna. I got my sound meter, and I'm gonna go around and see how loud it really is. So I went around the track at various points and gathered a grouping of decibel readings. The highest one, which peaked at around 93 dB. We're here to do some science to see if old people really can't hear or if they're just making it up. Now, the inverse square law states that sound drops by six dB for every doubling of distance from the source. So we do a quick bit of math, and that 93 dB that we measured 100 foot from the track is only 58.5 dB a mile away. That's the equivalent of a quiet chat between friends. But for that equation to hold true, there can be no reflective surfaces or barriers between the source of the sound and the location of where the sound is traveling to, which isn't the case. So to be more official and not rely on equations, I took a trip to the neighborhood across the street from the track to get some actual decibel readings. You can hear the track from here. Fifty three point five dB. I can hear the cars from here, but a bird's fart is louder. Now it's a smaller race event at the track today, so there's less cars, but there's still loud cars and you can barely hear anything. The cars driving by are louder than the race car sounds you hear. And we're in a geographic region that's very similar to the gated community that's also by Laguna. So I would imagine what they're hearing right here is also what they're hearing over there, which is diddly squat. In fact, the loudest thing here is the plane flying overhead. And that's got me thinking, what is the Highway 68 Coalition actually concerned about? Who are they really representing? None of the people I talk to even know who they are. And I'm not sure I do either. So who is the Highway 68 Coalition? A quick Google search won't turn up too much information other than the articles referencing the lawsuit itself. But if you dig a little deeper, you'll find that this isn't the first time the coalition has sued someone. In fact, there's been multiple cases where the coalition has sued and sometimes succeeded in stopping a development. And look, to be honest, sometimes I support that kind of stuff. Big developments fundamentally change the character of a city. Do you think the people of Englewood are stoked about having a 70,000 person stadium plopped right in their backyard? Probably not. Aside from some local business, all the residents of Inglewood get is more traffic in an already crowded area. But Laguna Seca isn't in an already crowded area. It doesn't regularly draw 70,000 person crowds, and the track was there long before anyone actually lived there. So what is the coalition's motive? Are they making some cheap attempt at a land grab? Are they just some litigious rich guys angry about their own decisions? Are they even them? Or is the coalition only 
one person. We had our suspicions, so we reached out to the lead attorney for the coalition to find out, but we never heard back from him. And it sounds like other publications have run into the same problem as well. A little more Google hunting will tell you that a man by the name of Mike P. Jr., we changed his name to protect his identity, is the chairman for the coalition. And if you go down the rabbit hole, there's no shortage of explanations for why the coalition or Mike Penis Jr. is suing Laguna. Some say this isn't the first time Mike has attempted to shut down the track. There's another story saying that Mike has a personal vendetta against the track because his dog was hit by a racer in the 70s. Another story says it was his brother who was killed. There's a veritable lore iceberg centered around this Mike Penis Jr. guy and whatever story you hear about him depends on who you talk to in the paddock. So who knows what Mike's deal really is? What I do know for sure is that a very special place is being threatened with closure for some seemingly legal but pretty lame reasons. And it's not the only one. The bigger question is, what does this mean for the future of racetracks and car culture in general? If you're a car enthusiast right now, you might kind of feel like you're part of a community that's getting legislated out of existence. Combustion engines are being phased out for EVs. There's legislation in the works around the world mandating speed limit governors. Fines are being issued for driving old cars in big cities. And hidden cameras can issue fines for any number of infractions, no matter how large or small. All that sucks even more when really iconic tracks, places where rules like those don't apply, Places like Laguna Seca come under threat. And it's not the only racetrack facing closure for similar reasons. The closure of this racetrack means there will only be one left in the state. One last time, the Palm Beach County racing community gathered here. For 53 years, the final Governor's Cup at the track, as the owners say they are closing down for good. Noise ordinances have killed tracks around America, while others have been bought up by commercial developers. With grassroots racing being more expensive than ever before, increased land value has made selling tracks more profitable than keeping them open. When I was a kid, my favorite track when playing Gran Turismo was Laguna Seca. A PS1 and a vibrating DualShock controller was the closest I thought I'd ever get to this track. All right, first time at Laguna Seca in a car. Pretty incredible. Not my car. We're in a Camaro Z01, very fitting. And 21 years later, I'm now behind the wheel of a 650 horsepower Camaro, feeling those same vibrations, only this time through a steering wheel. Some of the most iconic names in motorsports history all have gone round and round at Laguna. And the beautiful thing about motorsports is that you could do this too if you wanted. You could drop down five and a half stories in the courts crew. You can hit 150 plus miles an hour on the front straight. You can be a part of history to put your name down as someone who's driven on one of the most famous tracks in the world, right alongside your racing idols. I'll never be able to throw a pass at Lambeau or hit a ball at Wrigley Field. And that's okay, because lucky for me, I get to drive Laguna Seca. And for now, Laguna's 2024 schedule appears to be unchanged. This could be a loss for the Highway 68 Coalition, and personally, I hope it is. But just in case it isn't, don't take your local tracks for granted. Get out there and become a part of their history. You just might help our tracks live a little longer. And that's what's cool about these VG engines. They were super overbuilt. So you, you could add a bunch of boost, baby. Hey, do you think the turbo is the adrenaline gland of the car? Engine is the heart, oil is the blood. Oil is the blood, but I think engine's the tummy. Well, that makes sense because the gas is the food. So wait, are the drive shafts the legs or is it the axles? It's the axles. Yeah. Wheels are the feet. The windshield is the eye. No, the headlights are the eye. Not according to the movie Cars, James. Cars isn't real, You Nolan. take that back! I'm willing to admit the bumper is the butt if you admit that the CV joint is the knee. Does that make the tailpipe the... Hey, just so you know, the meeting was canceled. Amazing. The butthole. The, the tailpipe is the butthole. Yeah. You understand? I, yes. Okay. Anyway, during the late 90s, Nissan... Bumper is the butt cheeks. Thank you so much for watching. Racetracks are super important to me. If you go to the track often, bring a friend with you who's never gone before so they know how awesome it is. If there's a race in your area, go out there and watch it. If you've never been to a race before, dude, awesome. Go see it for yourself and see why it's so important that we keep places like Laguna Seca open. All right, be kind, see you next time.